that were moderately low in thyroid hormone in these babies that were not supplemented with iodine. So on this next slide, you can see that none of the group two mothers who were supplemented with iodine at, after the first trimester had low levels of thyroid hormone. And here's the group one, and none of them were also low in thyroid hormone. In fact, they were better than the group two. So you could see the earlier the mothers were supplemented with iodine, the better the baby's thyroid hormone was. Now, the more important study, more important graph is this one, the mean IQ. And you could see from group one to group two to group three, the decline in IQ, the later iodine was given in pregnancy. Now group one has a normal IQ, or slightly above normal, it's over 100. Group two, over 90. Um, group three, they were very low in IQ. And these people are going to have big trouble through the life. They're going to have trouble maintaining jobs. They're going to have trouble getting through school. And they're going to be more likely to be in the public dole. So the earlier you take iodine, the better the baby's IQ is going to be. It's important to ensure we have adequate iodine intake in our youth before women are pregnant and even in our kids before they start reaching adolescence and maturity. Now the author summarized this by saying a delay in 6 to 10 weeks of iodine supplementation of slightly low uh, thyroid mothers at the beginning of gestation increases the risk of neurodevelopmental delay in the progeny. So the, what the authors are saying is we need to supplement people with iodine before they're pregnant. So wh why look at iodine? Its, it's deficiency is a worldwide problem. Its deficiency causes mental impairment, reduced intellectual ability, ADD, autism, goiter, infertility have been associated with low iodine, as well as increased risk of all the, all the hormonal-based cancers, breast, prostate, endometrium, ovaries, as well as other cancers of the body. The newborn thyroid gland only holds a 24-hour reserve of iodine. Therefore, fresh sources must be supplied in the diet. Where's a newborn going to get iodine from? He's going to get it from his mother if she's breastfeeding, or he's going to get it from formula. There's not enough iodine in formula, and I'll show you that most mothers are deficient in iodine. Now, breast milk iodine. 47% of women sampled may be providing insufficient iodine to meet the infant's requirements. This was a recent study. Here's another study. 13 breastfeeding women were looked at. Um, 12 of 13, 92% had inadequate iodine in the breast milk. This was done in the U.S. And this was done recently. 69% um, of the breast milk samples were high in a substance called perchlorate. Perchlorate is a byproduct of rocket fuel and some other manufacturing processes. Right now, the companies that make perchlorate just dump it into our water supply. It's all over the place. Um, perchlorate has been found on... Um, crops grow irrigated with perchlorate-laden water, which is usually Southern California and the Colorado River Basin. That's pretty much where we get all our winter vegetables and winter fruit supply from. And they've shown that these vegetables and fruit have been high in perchlorate. Between 1965 and 1980, the U.S. milk iodine content increased by 300 to 500 percent. That was from changes in cattle feed. By 1986, the amount of iodine was limited to 10 milligrams per cow per day. And here's what happened to um, iodine content in dairy milk. And you can see from a high of 602 micrograms per liter in 1978, recent measurements less than 100. It's no wonder that 96% of us are iodine deficient when you start looking at this data. So why iodine? The World Health Organization claims iodine deficiency is the world's greatest single cause of preventable mental retardation. They estimate there are 300 million school-aged children worldwide who are iodine deficient. It encompasses a third of the world's population and 129 countries, including our own. There's decreased childhood survival rate in iodine deficient areas, and neonatal mortality has been shown to decline over 50% when iodine deficiency is rectified. Presently, 72% of the world's population, including the United States, is affected by iodine deficiency. Recent study from thyroid, the journal Thyroid, 100 consecutive healthy pregnant Bostonians, 50% found to be below the RDA for iodine, 9% below 50 micrograms per day of intake of iodine, which is what the World Health Organization claims is severe iodine deficiency. Now, there is a definite correlation between lower iodine and autism. As similar to the U.S., a pattern of iodine decline in a population that can commit an increase in autism has been seen in other countries. We've seen this incredible rise in autism over the last 10 years in the U.S. The same thing has happened in England, New Zealand, and Australia, and other Western countries. And many researchers think it's due to iodine decline. 16 women from an iodine deficient area of Italy compared to 7 women from a higher iodine area. They were looked at while they were pregnant. The women from the iodine deficient area had reduced T4, that's thyroid hormone, a decrease in free thyroid hormone with elevated TSH in 50% of pregnant women. 
The authors hypothesized that the imbalance of maternal thyroid hormone homeostasis during pregnancy as a consequence of endemic iodine deficiency may be responsible for the impaired psychoneurological development observed in children from that area. Appropriate iodine and or thyroxine prophylaxis to women in that region may prevent the neural, behavioral, cognitive, and motor compromise of that population. I think it's a travesty that 16% um, of public school age boys are on some mood altering drug right now. Where were these huge percentages of public school age boys that needed mood altering drugs when I was a kid? Nobody was on these things. Something has happened in our environment um, to cause this behavioral change and this, uh, this mood change that we're seeing in our young people, and I say it's iodine deficiency. Another study, 16 women living in an iodine deficient area versus 11 women living in an iodine sufficient area. 10 years of follow-up. What the authors found was that ADD was diagnosed in 11 of 16 in the iodine deficient area versus zero in the iodine sufficient area. The more telling number was the IQ was lower in the iodine deficient area, 88 versus an IQ of 99 in an iodine sufficient area. Now I went to the University of Michigan um, I can guarantee you an IQ of 88 won't get you into the University of Michigan, but it gets you into places like this. And there's many Cretans in this place, and here's an example of a Cretan. They have these big heads, these, these silly looking eyes, and the stupid grin on their face. Um, this is a sign of iodine deficiency. If you see this, run the other way and give them iodine. This, on the other hand, is iodine sufficiency. Um, and, um, Last year, Michigan did not have a good football season. Coach Rich Rod forgot to give the team iodine. He assured me this year the team would take iodine, so we're looking for a better production from our football team. So what about iodine and, and cardiomyopathy? 61 patients with dilated cardiomyopathy. The dilation of the heart, which is what cardiomyopathy is, was significantly correlated with thyroid gland volume. Therefore, the larger the thyroid, the more the problems they had with the heart. 97% of the patients showed goiter. Uh, what's the most common cause of goiter known to mankind? It's iodine deficiency. Now, the, the correlation between cholesterol and iodine is pretty rock solid for those who are going to look at it. Um, conventional medicine would have you believe that elevated cholesterol levels is just a deficiency of a statin drug. And as I wrote in my book, Drugs That Don't Work and Natural Therapies That Do, statin drugs need to be avoided. I don't think anyone needs to be on them. I think they're the wrong therapy. If cholesterol levels are truly elevated, you need to search for the underlying cause of why cholesterol levels are elevated. Many times it's a diet and nutritional problem, and I'll tell you many times it's an iodine deficiency problem. Now the whole cholesterol equals heart disease hypothesis started in the early 1900s when a researcher demonstrated that feeding rabbits cholesterol caused them to develop atherosclerosis. In the same pathology that humans develop atherosclerosis. Now, that's where the whole train started, that cholesterol equals atherosclerosis. And that's why we have drugs now to lower cholesterol levels. Um, but a few years after the researcher reported that study, they redid the study, they fed iodine to rabbits, and then they fed them cholesterol, and they found that the iodine would prevent the deposition of cholesterol in the arteries of rabbits that were fed cholesterol. These same studies were reproduced in the literature four times over the years. So, Here's one of the studies. Rabbits fed a high cholesterol diet. A treatment group of rabbits fed a high cholesterol diet and treated with either uh, T4, which is levothyroid or synthroid, desiccated thyroid hormone, which is armor thyroid or nature thyroid, and iodine. Now, the control rabbits fed cholesterol developed marked atherosclerosis, just as the previous studies showed. However, the rabbits fed a high cholesterol diet and thyroid hormone showed slight to moderate. The rabbits fed a high cholesterol rich diet and either desiccated thyroid hormone or iodine showed an absence of atherosclerotic lesions. So this study showed that iodine has an independent positive benefit in a cholesterol rich diet as well as a synergistic effect with desiccated thyroid hormones such as armor thyroid or nature thyroid. I say we missed the boat on this cholesterol equals heart disease hypothesis. It's not a statin deficiency syndrome. It's an iodine deficiency syndrome coupled with other nutritional deficits. Now, in another study, rats fed an iodine deficient diet versus an iodine sufficient diet. The iodine sufficient diet resulted in a much lower thyroid weight, um, about four times lower. <clears throat> when the rats were fed a high cholesterol diet, the thyroid weight significantly increased in both groups. The high cholesterol diet was found to increase the body's excretion of iodine. So think about this. We live in a, in a very wealthy Western society. Like all wealthy Western societies, we eat more cholesterol in our diet than societies that aren't as wealthy. Now, if you're iodine deficient, um, 
these high cholesterol diet causes you to release more iodine. You be become even more iodine deficient. They need more iodine. We need more iodine than what the RDA says. So iodine deficiency in rats has been shown to result in a subclinical hypothyroid picture, slightly elevated TSH with normal thyroid hormones. And despite normal T3 levels, which is the active form of thyroid, heart tissue was found to be deficient in T3. The T4 therapy, such as levothyroid or synthroid, was unable to correct the cardiac deficiency when there was iodine deficiency present. What they're saying here is you've got to correct the underlying problems, in this case, iodine deficiency, before you give them thyroid hormone. And I find the same thing with my patients. The worst thing you can do in a hypothyroid patient is give them thyroid hormone when they need iodine first. So I correct the iodine deficiency problem first or whatever the underlying problem is, and then wait, wait a little bit and see if they do need thyroid hormone after that. And many times they don't. 136 subjects. They were looked at for iodine intake and lipid parameters. Compared to iodine-sufficient non-goitrous controls, iodine-deficient goitrous subjects had significantly higher average cholesterol levels and LDL cholesterol levels. <clears throat> now, it's nice that we have drugs to treat all these elevated LDLs, but that's, we don't have an LDL drug deficiency problem going on here. We have iodine deficiency going on. You need to treat the underlying problem first. Ansel Keys in 1958 published data that the countries with the highest cholesterol levels had the highest rate of cardiovascular disease. Now, he, drew, he had a graph that he presented and he became the toast of the United States and the graph showed more cholesterol in your diet, the more deaths from heart disease. It was a pretty one, clear one-to-one -one correlation. However, he, he manipulated the data and I described this more in my Drugs That Don't Work book if you're interested more about this. But at the time that he wrote this, Finland had the highest rate of cardiovascular disease mortality in Europe. It was more prevalent in Eastern Finland than Western Finland. And the, the question was why? Um, researchers looked at a variety of dietary components. They looked at 47 different items studied. And what they found was that iodine intake showed the greatest statistical difference between Eastern and Western Finland. The risk of death from heart disease was 353% higher in individuals with goiter. There was also significantly lo lower death age in those with goiter. I mean, they died at an earlier age if you had a swollen thyroid. What's the most common cause of goiter? By far, iodine deficiency. Now, Finland doesn't wait 100 years like we do here. In 1970, the researchers relooked at 21 Finnish cities um, and the cardiovascular diseases as it related to uh, trace elements in the drinking water. And they looked at calcium, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, and iodine. The endpoints were heart disease, as shown in this slide. But the strongest correlation was iodine, the highest intake of iodine associated with the lowest rates of cardiovascular disease. So Finland markedly increased iodine intake in its population by adding more to dairy feed and more to animal salt. And the results were in the past several decades, their cardiovascular mortality has decreased by 50, over 50%. Life expectancy has increased by five years. Finland currently has the highest iodine intake of any European country. That's what we should be doing here. So let's, let's look at a recent study, um, 2009, on iodine and lipid profiles. 262 children were studied in Morocco. And they were studied from an iodine deficient area. They all had slightly elevated TSH, still in the normal range, but slightly elevated. They were given 400 milligrams of iodine orally. Remember, that's way above the, uh, the, the RDA for iodine. And after six months of taking this single dose of iodine, they found the TSH came down into much better normal ranges. The C-peptide level improved. Now, the C-peptide level is a measure of insulin release in the body, or we use this as a marker for diabetes. And their lipid parameters, the LDL over HDL ratio, fell from 3.3 to 2.4 in these children. So the author summarizes by saying correction of iodine-associated subclinical hypothyroidism improves the insulin and lipid profile and may reduce the risk for cardiovascular.